Next on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Brian O'Neill. He's the bluebird of happiness. He's Alfred University political science professor emeritus, Dr. Robert A. Heineman, and he's here. Tweet, tweet. That's what your president does. Yes, well, he's... <laughs> He's on the Twitter all he's the time. On the, he's on a different bird. Let's put it yes. that way. Dr. Heinemann, since we last spoke, Rudy Giuliani, who's uh, one of the president's personal attorneys, uh, had an embarrassing moment. Giuliani put his cell phone in his pocket and bumped into the cell phone. They call that pocket dialing. And a NBC reporter was called, and the NBC reporter said he overheard uh, Giuliani saying negative things about uh, Joe Biden. Giuliani is also on the record as saying contradictory things as to whether he had anything to do with uh, launching an investigation into Joe and Hunter Biden and their um, activities in the Ukraine. Question, how much of a problem is Giuliani to Trump, and will President Trump dump Giuliani? Well, I think he uh, could well be a problem to uh, Trump. I don't want to spend much time talking about Giuliani because, frankly, I don't care about him. And second, I don't know much about, you know, the charges, et cetera, that have been made involving him. Uh, he's, uh, his potential to be a real embarrassment is pretty high. And if we know Trump, uh, Trump won't mess around with that too long. He'll uh, send him on his way, which is probably what he should have done long ago. But that's my thoughts on Giuliani. So Whistleblower. Uh, whistleblower, yes. Uh, do you feel? I, I have a little something here. I have his name. It was broken. Uh, the story was broken by RealClearInvestigations.com and a reporter named Paul Sperry. Right. Are you comfortable with me saying his name? What do I care? Okay. I mean, it's not, he's not a friend of mine. I don't <laughs> think he's even a former student. Uh. <laughs> okay. A uh, 33 year old, and uh, his last name is uh, Cheramella. According to this story, a registered Democrat uh, was uh, one of the holdovers from the Obama administration, and he worked with uh, Vice President Joe Biden and former CIA Director John Brennan. They say that he was a vocal critic of Trump who helped initiate the Russia collusion investigation. He's, he's an analyst, by the way. Yeah, CIA well, analyst. listen, what we're dealing with is one of these young kids that's been, and they're running all over. Uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, I think he's 33 years old now. He was probably in his mid to early 20s when he got uh, hooked up and ended up in the CIA. He's obviously pretty bright. Uh, I imagine he's got pretty uh, extensive language uh, capability and such. But he's one of these people that, uh, and it's just amazing, uh, obviously, the influence the guy has had. But my understanding is that he's had one of his closest friends is a uh, senior staff member on the sh uh, Schiff committee, and uh, he's met with this guy uh, regularly. And of course, Schiff gives the idea that no, no, I had nothing to do with this whistleblower. Well, that's not true at all. And uh, so he's been feeding information in there, and apparently, it looks to me like they're basically digging around trying to find something. And this guy comes up with this Ukrainian phone call, which he did not hear had no direct access to, and simply uh, kind of made up what he thought uh, that it really uh, was some sort of uh, extortion scheme on the part of our president. Uh, it's all, uh, it, it, this whole game at the national level is just uh, uh, totally out of control uh, because, again, this is uh, apparently is tied into this whole Russian collusion effort that started the whole Mueller investigation as well. So you have all these uh, sort of uh, fabricated um, stories and guesses, and all of a sudden they're being used to uh, suggest that however, somehow, the president has committed a crime um, and should be impeached. And uh, it really is, uh, it's kind of sick, really. And uh, I think that is reflected then in the vote yesterday on the uh, uh, impeachment uh, procedure resolution. You want me to continue there? Go on ahead. That? I was yeah. just about to say what, go ahead. Uh, the, uh, uh, <laughs> what, uh, first of all, clearly the Democrats, and, and again, uh, the New York Times webpage uh, suggests that uh, 
the Democrats think that there's a lot of support for this impeachment effort out there, so that's why they're uh, leveling this vote. I think it's exactly the opposite. I think Pelosi and the Democrats are getting a tremendous amount of heat on the unfairness of the way they had or had been approaching to this, and uh, uh, the Republicans had a pretty good handle there, I think, in terms of claiming that the procedure was uh, totally unfair and maybe unconstitutional. I don't know if you could push it that far, but it was clearly totally unfair. And uh, I think they got enough heat that they decided, well, maybe we better come up with some sort of procedures here that we can agree on. And uh, so uh, we get this resolution. But I think as well, uh, and, and I think that the Republicans' position was playing pretty well in the country, but as well is the question once this gets in the courts. So there's the argument that they can do anything they want. Uh, the Constitution says you can go any way you want here with an impeachment investigation. And the courts may well draw the line and say, hey, hold it here. You're going to be impeaching a president. There has to be some kind of clear procedures here that you have to be following, and they have to be reasonably fair. And so I think this is an attempt here to stave off uh, a court decision, uh, a negative court decision in this respect. So I think there are a number of things operating there that uh, finally force the Democrats to come up with some sort of uh, procedure. And I, uh, I think a- uh, one of the key aspects here is that the Republicans have stuck together absolutely solidly on this. And, uh, and I think they picked up a couple of Democrat votes. But uh, the fact that they are solidly against this, I think, is a very good sign for the Republicans. What do you think of this uh, witness, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman? Uh, I think uh, in some ways the Republicans may be overreacting a little bit. I mean, the one problem there is uh, he is in the military. And he has uh, the whole chain of command and his duty to, you know, uh, obey uh, his superiors uh, in some respects is gone by the board. But even the New York Times articles about uh, the fact that there were some gaps in this uh, transcript, uh, basically dots, ellipses, saying uh, there's a word or two missing here or whatever. Even the New York Times says it really doesn't change the substance or impact of the conversation. So that the words that are missing uh, don't have much relevance one way or another. So, again, this is another example of what's been going on inside uh, these uh, Democrat secret committee meetings and such. Anything that's new is uh, seized upon as, wow, another bombshell, etc. There's really nothing to it. Now, I'll admit it's, it's new. I mean, the guys come forward with this. And I'm not certain. I'm not certain he's even saying that somehow there's uh, this proves that the president has acted illegally or uh, unethically. Uh, he's just saying that you know there's some parts of this that were left out. Now, what difference that makes is not clear to me at all. On that resolution from yesterday, I think this resolution, Brian, uh, that was voted on yesterday, uh, puts the hearings in the Judiciary Committee. Uh, so it looks to me like it's taking it away from the Intelligence Committee, uh, which is with the committee that Schiff uh, chairs. And in fact, uh, the guy has, um, um, if not making it a total fool of himself, has become increasingly kind of an embarrassment, I think, uh, to the Democrats, starting with his mis- what did he misquoted the conversation that the president had on that transcript or whatever? That's what's being said. And he's... He's done a number of other things like this. Not, and again, this resolution that's coming out of the House, uh, it allows uh, the Republicans to uh, go to the meetings. Well, thanks a lot. And it allows them to bring witnesses, but they can only bring witnesses that are approved by uh, Nancy Pelosi. So the Democrats are not going to let them bring some witnesses. Now, obviously, uh, the Republicans can play that a little bit if they have to, but um, it looks to me like it's moving away from Schiff, and uh, you know, from the Democrats' point of view, that's probably a very good thing. Uh, Congressman Tauber, can we talk about him a sec? Well, I suppose, sure. Reed, this is kind of interesting. He's done this for the last few press conferences. He's 
staying with the argument that uh, he believes there's no smoking gun against the president, but that Joe and Hunter Biden are corrupt. And uh, we talked about that. Uh, in, in a media call, it was kind of an interesting exchange between Reed and uh, the Buffalo News' uh, Jerry Zaremski. We're talking about corruption based on a sitting vice president, i.e. Joe Biden, in his position as vice president, enhancing the financial benefit of his family, i.e. his son. That, what evidence surface, do you see for that? I've not, seen any evidence. I've, not seen that. I've not seen any evidence for that. What evidence have you seen for yeah. that? So I, I would just speak to the, the facts that have been proven. Uh, you have Hunter Biden. Uh, and and re- well, basically what Reed goes on to say quickly, summing it up because he, he took a while to say it. What Reed said is you got the videotape of Joe Biden saying that he threatened the investigator of withholding. A, right. Uh, he threatened Bragging the leaders it. in right. Ukraine with uh, withholding a billion dollars if they didn't uh, drop get the investigator to drop the case against uh, Hunter Biden. And then uh, Reed cited uh, Hunter Biden's uh, salaries for all these different. Yeah, companies. no, uh. I think uh, uh, Hunter, Hunter Biden is a real embarrassment to the Bidens, frankly. And uh, he's clearly uh, going out of his way, uh, as far as anybody looking at this evidence would suggest, uh, to uh, milk this for as much as he can. And, uh, no, I think it's, it, it should be a real embarrassment uh, to the Bidens. And, but, you know, Joe is playing uh, the old politics-as-usual game with Inside the Beltway. And now all of a sudden that's looking uh, uh, pretty awkward and really quite, uh, well, quite unethical. Now, whether it's illegal or not, I don't know. But uh, it's, uh, I think it's a pretty big embarrassment uh, to Biden. And, and the problem is you keep pushing this impeachment discussion. Um, I think Biden's name is going to come up again and again. And so um, I think his chances of getting the nomination are sort of drifting away. Uh, Can I have play a little bit more uh, Reed audio? Well, sure. Okay, Reed here. He's asked if holding the views that he does about Trump's innocence and Biden's guilt, if that hurts Reed's standing with the Problem Solvers Caucuses, which is Republicans and Democrats working together in a caucus. Do you have any concerns at all that might undercut your uh, position as the, the head of the Problem Solvers, Con- uh, Problem Solvers Caucus when you're taking this really hardline Republican uh, position on impeachment. Well, and that's uh, and and many of my Democratic colleagues, uh, I guess, could be you could raise the same argument the other way uh, that believe that uh, this was all uh, campaign related uh, uh, smear tactic on a political opponent. And there's no credibility or no evidence that would suggest that corruption, uh, a good faith uh, uh, corruption inquiry was being made here. And therefore, um, I guess you could uh, interpret it that way. Um, I don't look at this as a partisan position. What I'm looking at is on its surface, you have this fact pattern. You have a serious question of corruption potentially uh, being out there. Hey, and he's talking about Biden's there. Uh, Dr. Bob, so, you, you know, what, what Reed is saying there is you could flip the situation. Uh, flip. Absolutely. The Democrats can look just as... Uh, um, Stubborn and uh, rigid as, uh, you know, and I don't think Reed's looking terribly rigid at all here. I think one of the things that he could work in there is that this whole impeachment thing is uh, really hurting uh, some of the uh, policies and programs that should be atten- attended to. And uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to deal with the uh, revised agreements with Canada and Mexico here before they uh, adjourn for the holiday weekend. Uh, it's uh, this is. I mean, the, the Democrats are going to pay for this, and that's why I think the Republicans have stuck together solidly on this. And uh, now again, this uh, resolution is simply to authorize or support an investigation. It is not in any way, shape, or form to argue that the president should be impeached. Uh, so it's quite possible you would get after. Uh, if they have a halfway fair investigation, you might well have a number of Democrats saying, hey, where are we going with this? This is uh, um, there's nothing here. And uh, to, to go running around trying to impeach presidents willy nilly, uh, I think it's more than willy nilly. I mean, this is a serious constitutional uh, power. And uh, I think some Democrats are going to say we've got to have more in this. But we'll see. 
Uh, I, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, Bernie Sanders there a little bit. Yeah, uh, Sanders endorsed by the squad. Yes, he's gotten uh, an endorsement by the really uh, the nutso uh, wing of the uh, Repub- uh, Democrat Party, uh, and uh, that may well help him. But uh, I think it does follow the uh, Nixon um, axiom, which is uh, – when you're in the primaries, you run to the right. When you're running the general election, you run to the center. So what Bernie's doing is running to the left here and picking up uh, these four uh, women uh, as supporters, which may help him. But I, I think having them as supporters in the general election, frankly, I don't think that's something you want uh, in your camp. Uh, so I think he's got, he might have an awkward uh, Pretty awkward situation there. I do think, though, that, and we made that point here again and again on this program, that uh, the chances of a third party coming out of the uh, Democrat uh, side are, are very high. Can we yeah. talk third parties in New York State for a sec? Uh, third parties in New York State? Do we like have the third? Working Families Party. The Working Families Party, yes. Uh, um, New York Daily News and other uh, left, you know, left to center publications have been hitting Governor Andrew Cuomo hard lately, uh, talking about how the Working Family Party is uh, Working Families Party uh, is being endangered by Governor Andrew Cuomo. Indeed, certainly is. And the Conservative Party sent out a statement agreeing with that. Yes, saying that the governor likes to hurt political parties that disagree with him or hurt him politically. Well, I think he wants very much to get these third parties off the uh, off the fusion. Uh, situation now. It looks like he's increasingly moving away from doing away with the fusion voting, which allows the votes to be added up from these various lines. And uh, the last I saw, he was going to raise uh, the requirement for getting a line on the ballot, and that uh, right now is fifty thousand. You get fifty thousand votes in the governor's race, uh, you automatically get. Uh, a spot on the ballot, and maybe that's in primary. I'm not sure, but uh, Governor Cuomo wants to raise it to 250 thousand, and I've had a lot of my Republican friends agree with that. That uh, that 50 thousand is way too low, and so if you want a line, an automatic line on the ballot, uh, you better come up with 250 thousand votes. Um, and uh, the material I saw indicated that really the only uh, Third party that can uh, achieve that or comes has achieved it in the past is the conservative party. Uh, that doesn't mean they'll be able to do that consistently, but uh, they uh, might still be able to get an automatic uh, line. But the rest of them would have to work pretty hard. And I think the idea here is uh, if you can't get to 250, and you know you're not going to get to 250,000. You're better off just switching over to the Democrat party and. Uh, uh, I think the third party lines will begin to drift away into nothing, which, from my point of view, would be good. And I think Cuomo would agree with that. Uh, can we talk about the DA's election in Monroe County? Yeah, we could. Yes, we've talked about that before, and that's something to be watching on Tuesday. Uh, we got uh, we have two races there that are really pretty important. One is the uh, uh, county executive race with Denoflo going against, I think it's Bello. Uh, and the Democrats trying uh, <clears throat> pretty hard uh, to take control of Monroe County. But the DA's race, of course, Mr. Uh, Soros comes into play there. And I think the last time I reported that uh, uh, Miss Dorley's uh, opponent, and I don't know the name of the woman who's opposing her, and, and that's really not fair on my part, but uh, Dorley is the incumbent Republican, and... Uh, the woman opposing her, uh, when we last talked, I had received, I think, 140000 from the Open uh, Society Foundation. And uh, last time I talked to my friends up there, that has gone over 700000 has been put uh, on her behalf. Now, uh, they may well not be uh, telling people to vote for her or against Dorley directly, but they're running ads which... Uh, uh, cast a pretty bad shadow on Dorley and the judicial system up there. And I think Dorley's coming back with ads now saying 
you know, don't let George Soros determine our uh, DA in Monroe County, which I think would be pretty effective. But uh, they're definitely uh, putting a real effort in there to take control of the criminal justice system, which they have been successful in doing in a number of other major counties around the country. So it's definitely something to watch. On the topic of criminal justice. Yes. Uh, State Senator Tom O'Meara put out a statement on Wednesday saying the New York City Democrat State Senator Kevin Parker wants to uh, pass a law to give prisoners who have life sentences the right to vote and the right to sit in on jury trials, on the jury. Uh, is this something that will... Wonderful idea. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What's that do for the Democrats as far as their control of the state Senate goes? Nothing. Uh, but I think uh, Senator O'Meara, by making this public, maybe makes it a little more difficult for people to uh, hold their nose and vote for Democrats. Uh, yeah, these guys downstate are uh, off the wall. Um, so uh, I guess, you know, in, in some states, I mean, some states may actually allow prisoners to uh, vote. I'm not sure, but I'm not certain. Setting on juries, that's, uh, uh, come on. Uh so, uh, uh, well. What do you say, Doc, when they call you up for jury duty? Uh, I say I've already served. Oh, you don't have to come up with a wild excuse? Well, I'm not breastfeeding any children, so I, I can't <laughs> get that exemption. Uh, so it takes care of itself. Would you sway the jury, Doc? I, I don't know. Please, we're getting way off the, <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere here, Brian. <laughs> the, the juries don't like that, I hear. I hear what? They don't like those types that can sway everybody one way or well, hold things up. I have no up. idea. I think you have a lot of people out there that think they can, that think they they have know about everything there is to know. And I can see somebody like that on a jury just irritating everybody pretty badly. I don't know, but I must say, you know, the jury system it works pretty well generally. I, uh, you know, I I wouldn't uh, besmirch it uh, uh, just off the cuff here uh juries are not uh you know they they do their job all righty with that we have to go thank you so much dr bob well thank you brian